The new Entrepreneur Show is sponsored by Statewide Insurers Group. As an independent agency, we can shop your insurance needs for the best coverage and the best value. Also sponsored by the Small Business Centers of Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson Community Colleges, as well as the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. Welcome to the new entrepreneur show that spotlights and celebrates entrepreneurship in Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson counties, um, and tries to do a little teaching through example and, and actual teaching for would-be entrepreneurs. Um, I'm Fred George, your host today. Our guest is Gina. I have a tar- hard time with her last name. Gina Messer. No, you got it. Perfect. There you go. You got an A. Of the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. There you go. Bam. You got a hundred. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm I'm smarter than I look. Yeah, two for two. Just barely smarter than I look. <laughs> um, and that's located here at Virginia, not Virginia Wesleyan. North Carolina. North Carolina Wesleyan. Wesleyan. Yes. I used to live in Virginia Beach. They have Virginia uh, Wesleyan uh, there. There actually, there's Wesleyans all over. We're part of the Methodist Church, um, but we happen to be North Carolina Wesleyan here in Rocky Mountain. See, I got the name right. I got the name of your organization right, and then I got the state wrong. So I got the two hard. It's like it's like high school. I got the two hard questions, and then miss the easy one. There you go. Sad, sad. So um, we got a lot of folks watching. Surprisingly, very few people in North Carolina know about all the resources we have here. We have an amazing amount of resources. Yes. What is the mission of the North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship? Um, Fred, I'll tell you, and I've said it a hundred times, I'm one of the best kept secrets in Rocky Mount. The center has been around since about 2012. We were started um, from the generosity of entrepreneurs that funded the center. And I am here for the sole purpose of helping entrepreneurs from the thought, the concept, all the way through launch and expansion. Um, I I don't limit size, I don't limit income or the number of employees that you may have. I work with one man shows um, all the way up to some of our major employers in the um, the county. Nice, nice. And that's something, a little help when you go into business for yourself or trying to grow a business is is huge. Mm -hmm. Having, Having done all those things and having been too stubborn or uninformed to ask for much help. Um, I just kind of did what I did. Which a lot of entrepreneurs do. And you know, entrepreneurs by the very definition are risk takers. Oh yeah. So they're going to be folks who are not going to go ask for a lot of help or a lot of, what do you think? What do you think? They're just going to go do it. Um, I should also add that for the most part, everything I have to offer is free and um, confidential. Whatever you come and share with me at the center stays with me at the center. Perfect. All right, so let's say you know, the economy's done what it's done recently. Yeah. I don't have a job. I've always wanted to open a business. My, the business I work for is closed down or, or closed forever or whatever's going on. I have an idea. What can you do for me? I come to you with, I've got this idea. I want to open a, a, a mobile dry cleaning drop-off service or whatever crazy thing. Mm-hmm. What, what services do you offer for me? Well, um, of course, opening a mobile dry cleaning business might be a little more difficult than something else. Um, and then, of course, something else might be more difficult than the dry cleaning business. But I will sit down with you. I, I'm not necessarily hung up on business plans. I think business plans are a good idea because I think you need a plan. Um, I don't necessarily call it a business plan. I agree. But I think the things that we're going to do, uh, uh, for example, in the last couple of weeks, I've had a young lady with a home-based business who does bath and body products. And I total opposite spectrum, I had a guy starting a truck driving business. Oh, wow. So I am not a subject matter expert in all of those things. I may be an expert in business, but I'm not necessarily an expert in ingredients and mixing, nor am I an expert in truck driving. But I have friends and resources that are. So what I'll do is I'll bring them in on the conversations. Once again, total confidentiality, and we'll get you going in the right direction. I had a student last semester who worked for a shrimp company out of uh, Miami. Oh, wow. um, he was here somewhat as a vendor, uh, you know, spreading the word. Uh, they wanted to get an import and exporting. Once again, not necessarily my strongest suit, but I've got friends in Raleigh. 
So those are the type of things that we do. Um, we'll sit down with you, help you kind of hammer it out. I had a young man here today. Uh, we were working on taxes. That's no fun. No, no fun. And you know what I told him? I said, um, let's let's hire a professional. Because there's some things you just don't want to play with. Absolutely. Um, and once again, we have a variety of resources, and we have some really good folks here in um, the, the Twin County area to help with some of those things. Nice. But, Jeff, you can bring me your idea. Lots of times, and you know this, being an entrepreneur, you just want a sounding board. Yeah. I just want somebody to walk through it with me. Um, and then when we hit that glitch, that's when we call in somebody maybe with a little bit more expertise. Get yeah. us back on the track and then work right on down. Well, that sounds valuable. I probably should have done more of that when I was coming up through business. Well, it's not too late. Fred, I'm I don't want to tell our audience, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I've made a few expensive, expensive errors along the way. Um, oh, and let me say one other thing. I don't just work with brick and mortar entrepreneurs. I have just as many um, social entrepreneurs um, doing um, nonprofit work, whether it's counseling, advocacy, those types of things. So you can bring ideas to me and I can work with you uh, on things that are not quite as tangible, not, not necessarily um, something that you're making okay. or doing. So pretty much anything in the realm of business, mm -hmm. you can help somebody with. Absolutely. Now, what if I've already got a business? I've been in business for a few years. I'm a one-man operation. I'd like to expand, get some employees, get a second location, whatever it is. Is that something that's still within what you yep. do? Yep. Um, you know, in another life, I'm a realtor. So I've helped a number of my entrepreneurs with site selection and, and layout, plant layout. Um, we can certainly help you with that next step because you know once again that's a lot of sounding boards I am not going to advise you financially on what you should do I think that's a discussion you need to have with your family and maybe your financial advisor slash accountant on your total financial picture but we will certainly look at things like payroll and what you're going to pay and what the going rates are and those types of things that you need to be aware of uh, moving forward when you start taking on additional folks yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense because if you haven't done it, and I did it the wrong way, which is I just started hiring people. And right, right, right. And afterwards. you know what? A lot of people don't know. I had a I had a young man in my office not too terribly long ago. Once again, we keep going back to the taxes, but he did the same thing. He started a business. He got business. He hired people. It never really occurred to him that he needed to do withholdings. Oh. Yes, oh. yes. So, oh. but anyhow, you know, you can make a mistake. Don't you're not going to go to prison. Um, but we just had to rectify it pretty quickly. And those are, those are things that we can do. And those are, those are things I can, um, although like I said, my expertise are not necessarily in Bath and Body Works or truck driving, but the business part is. So I'm here to warn you about those things so you don't get yourself in trouble. That makes sense. Because Fred and I have already been in trouble. <laughs> Lots of times. Lots of times. So don't, don't, don't take our, you know, don't do it like we did it. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the lessons are well learned in the School of Hard Knocks, but tuition is a little high. Mm -hmm. um, and having somebody to talk to about this, if you're talking about the sounding board, that, that makes a lot of sense. Because so many times as entrepreneurs and small business people, you get so caught up in putting out forest fires. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And doing all the wrong things right, that you miss the big stuff. You, That's you, right. you save yourself a nickel over here and get angry about that nickel and how it was going to be wasted. And there's $100,000 blowing away over there. That's huge. And now I go back to my accountant thing there. I used to do my own taxes for my business. Oof. And I spent, you know, at least a day running payroll every week when I was the face of the business. And that's how I made my money. I needed to be out there generating accounts, not spending Absolutely. all day in an office doing taxes and payroll and possibly doing them incorrectly. So that was the smartest move I ever made. I hired someone to do that and they generated payroll, you know, every week and it was effortless and then it was right. And then I could generate money doing what I do best. Um, also, you know, keep in mind if, if the coronavirus has told me anything and you asked, that was your leading question about I, I, I've lost my job or I'm thinking about it. I want people to think outside of the box. I want people to think about an additional revenue stream. Absolutely. Um, if you have a job, please keep it. Uh, you're very blessed. Um, hang in there with your employer, but think about that side hustle. Think about that conversation you keep having with your partner. This is the time to get your ducks in a row and, you know, 
possibly move forward. I'm not saying take out a loan. Most entrepreneurs start their businesses with money that they have. Um, and most entrepreneurs, and you and I are perfect examples, have many side hustles. You know, you've oh, yeah. got trade it, you've got small shops, I teach at Wesleyan, I run the center, I'm a realtor, I have some property management that I do. You you, you left out my new uh, medical equipment Oh, business. medical equipment, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're doing, our, we're doing our, our, our 95 masks, masks there, we get those from Fred. But um, I want everybody to think about what opportunities are there for me to fill now because of the coronavirus and what additional revenue can I add to the revenue I have coming in. And now's the time. Now is the time. Because there's... The most opportunity comes when people have been knocked out of their patterns. Mm -hmm. That's why smart advertisers advertise the heck out of new parents. Yes. Oh. Because they suddenly have new habits. They have to do things they never did before. They get a ton of targeted advertising, online, mail, stuff at the hospital they give you. People who've just moved. Um, there's a local business that does the, the welcome baskets. That's right. That's right. Um, because people who've just moved are now looking for new places to eat. Uh, new places to do their dry cleaning, new stores to shop at, their pattern has been disrupted. Coronavirus has disrupted every pattern for every person here. So all of your potential customers, all of them are looking for something. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. I, I couldn't have gotten into the, the, the medical mask business a year ago. A year ago, everybody could get medical masks. I've got some sources I can get them in. It's not a huge deal. It's a side hustle. Mm -hmm. I'm selling them to, in you know, batches of 100 or 1,000 to folks, and we're selling some at my stores. But a year ago, that opportunity didn't exist. Those distribution channels were set. I could not insert myself in them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all kinds of opportunity now. If you ever wanted to go into business, don't wait till things are good. Right now, when things are bad, when people are off balance, that's when the money can be made. Um, it's like investing in the stock market. You don't invest when the stocks have gone up for two years and, when, and buy a high, you, you invest when the stocks are low and poised to come back up. Now's the time the opportunity exists. Yes, and I use that word a lot these days, opportunity. And I'm not giving her a personal endorsement, but Susie Orman, who is, is uh, a leading force in the financial services sector, said this is the time to buy stock. This is the time. And if you don't buy now, you'll be very, uh, very unhappy with yourself. Uh, three to four months from now, I challenge you to look at the real estate market. I, you know, Absolutely. real estate is uh, forecasted to plunge approximately 40% over the, you know, the next multiple quarters. I tend to think you're going to see your biggest opportunity late 2020, 2021. So right now, get your house in order and get ready. Um, because if you've ever thought about buying or expanding your business, starting that new side hustle. I mean, you're just talking about masks, but what about gloves? What about uh, what about alcohol wipes? What about all the other? All of it. Yeah, this could be a, a totally different, you know, it might be small shops and then um, George's Medical Supply. I don't know. I'm working on it. Trust you're working me. on Trust it. Me. There you go. So yeah, I think this is a perfect time to think about what else can I do? Yeah, now's the time. A lot of people freeze when things get difficult and they don't jump. Right now is the time to look for the opportunities. What do you have that you're good at that you're maybe world class at and you can make money at? Absolutely. What is it you know that everybody around you doesn't know? You have sources, you have know-how that nobody else has. Somebody else has it. There's lots of people who know how to get those masks, but there's nobody selling them around here mm -hmm. who's getting the way we're getting them. So I, I froze for 10 days because I'm like, well, there's bigger people than me who know these sources, but, but they're not getting them in. So eventually I jumped. Find the thing that you're good at. Find the thing you've always wanted to do. Find a way to keep yourself busy while you're not busy that can result in extra income. And then find a way at your own risk level that you can live with because if the stress is gonna kill you, don't do it. Don't take a second mortgage and, and die of an ulcer if that's not your risk Absolutely. Tolerance. This is not the time to mortgage the house, put the kids' education fund up. No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about, no. But now is definitely a time of opportunity for those who are prepared or agile. You know, you, you make those changes right now. And when you're making those changes, debating on a new business, trying to figure out the details, particularly if you've never had a business, being able to talk to an experienced business person and run your ideas past them and get some input and maybe even some help, but maybe not even help, just a little input and right. wisdom is invaluable. And, and that's what Gina can provide you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I encourage you, if you're considering it, you know, 
make an appointment. How far in advance do I have to call to make an appointment with you? Well, it just depends on the week. Um, just uh, call, and I'll, I'll give you my number, um, and just call me and see, and, or, and text me when you're on the way, and I can let you know. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So even if you don't have a fully fleshed out idea, call Gina, sit down yeah. with her. Um, she can give you a lot of advice. I've been in business, uh, you know, 40 years, no, 35 years, give or take. Um, and, and she knows her stuff. Um, bouncing your ideas off her can keep you from making, you know, a $20,000 mistake or a $200,000 mistake. I've made some of those. Um, and can, can maybe lead to some more opportunities. So I encourage you to do that. Um, we need to take a quick commercial break to hear from our sponsors, including your office. Hi, the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. Hey, right hey, here at Wesleyan. We'll be right back and uh, finish our conversation with Gina. Thanks. Sponsored by Statewide Insurers Group. As an independent agency, we can shop your insurance needs for the best coverage and the best value. Also sponsored by the Small Business Centers of Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson Community Colleges, as well as the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. Small Shops Marketplace is in the business of helping you go into business for yourself. Anyone with a dream and a product to sell can open a retail store here at Small Shops Marketplace. We're open seven days a week with staff to assist your customers. Join dozens of your neighbors and try your hand at business ownership here at Small Shops Marketplace, located in the Inglewood Square Shopping Center at 2916 Sunset Avenue in the former Steimar location. Hey there, and welcome back to the New Entrepreneur Show with Gina Messernode, my guest from the East North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. I got it all right. You did, yeah. Um, it, North Carolina Wesleyan. There you I go. I even got the state right. Where are we located? You're located on Wesleyan Boulevard. Boulevard. <laughs> but in Rocky Mount. <laughs> in Rocky Mount, <laughs> North Carolina, 27804. There um, you go. <laughs> so we've, we've talked about um, what you can do for business folks and would-be business folks individually, one-on-one, -on -one, personal mentoring from someone who's owned businesses and who is well-educated. Um, so I can get that personal touch. I can, I can get mentored, taught, trained, bounce ideas off you, have you find me resources if I need, and, and I may take advantage of some of that, actually. I'm afraid you might. Um, what about, we were talking about some of the classes you offer, mm -hmm. um, and I know before COVID-19, these were generally held either here at the Gateway Technology Center at North Carolina Wesleyan, or sometimes downtown, downtown Station at Square. Station Square, yeah. Love Station Square, yeah. magnificent operation there. Uh, ben Braddock is a visionary. Um, now with COVID-19, social distancing, no more than 10 people in a room, how are we handling that nowadays? Well, it is a different world, isn't it? Oh, it's, yeah. I, I, I keep going back to the middle of March, you know, COVID was something far off and then bam, it kind of hit us, right? Bam is right. So the college is in a total lockdown. If you want to come visit me, you need to check in with the um, guard at uh, uh, off of Wesleyan Boulevard. We will maintain this particular format until the end of May, um, but you can come see me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the classes moving forward will in most cases be some type of virtual learning. We'll either do Facebook Lives, we'll do webinars. Um, I did do a podcasting class, you may have seen it last week, and there was six of us. 
and uh, two people we piped in remotely via Zoom. So we're going to have to move forward and we're still going to have the same offerings that we've always offered. Uh, but you know, once again, I may have to limit class size. Things will, I can almost assure you in most cases will be some type of virtual learning. Um, but that's how we will handle it. So here's the next question. I'm not up on all that technology. You and me both. I'm not up on all that technology. I don't know how to Zoom you, lady. Well, this is where you come see me one-on-one. -on -one. We'll log into our computer labs. We're still utilizing the Gateway Technology Center as a lab for our students. So we'll just hop on a computer and I'll, and I'll, I'll, teach, you about, I'll teach you about Zoom. All right. Um, I'll show you how to pull up a class. I'll, I'll show you how to walk through. Um, and that should probably be some of the first classes that you take because when you talk about opportunities, I think this is really where we're going to see the divide. We're going to see a divide with those folks who were able to get up and running via technology and those who could not. For example, you talked about, I had a connection. Well, more than likely, you probably ordered that stuff offline through your contact in China. Oh, yeah. You didn't call him. You didn't go see him. No, no, I can't, I can't understand them. They, they can type English, and I can type English, and they can read English, but I've tried calling them, and, and it's the accent, it's confusing both directions. Sure. So that's what I'm saying. So you had to utilize technology, and not that the phone is not a technology, but that, that will be a, a great divide with entrepreneurs, folks who are willing to learn, folks, um, you know, I can give you example after example of just businesses that I work with that just absolutely shocked me and floored me at how quickly they turned and they were able to get stuff on constant contact. You know, they had a database, and I was even surprised that some of them had a database, but they were able to reach out to their customers, offer them specials, let them know updates, let them know when they were open, how they were open, um, what protocols they were following. And then there's some over here that are kind of like crickets, right? We haven't heard from them for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be the crickets. You, you've got to be the one um, gathering information on your clients and you're not selling it to anybody. So your clients don't need to worry about that. Just name and email address um, so that Hopefully we never have another pandemic, but we could have a hurricane or something right. happen. You, you want to have a way to get a hold of your customers and let them know what's going on. So moving forward, the center will be deeply rooted in offering lots and lots of technology. Once again, um, up until this point, my classes have been free. All you need to do is get on my database. So once again, just contact me here at the Gateway and I can, I can get you on that. But I do not foresee offering any classes other than that pod class the other day. Probably not until sometime in June. But June's right around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's May already. So. Right, right, right. So, well, goodness gracious. Yeah, we're halfway through May. Mother's Day is the 12th. Oh, my goodness. So, I know. So, don't forget your mother. Um, but, yeah, so um, that's that's what uh, how we're going to be handling it. Now, as, as a school, as for Wesleyan, I, I believe that we see ourselves back to normal come fall. Nice. Well, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that's, that's what we're, we're all hoping good. and praying on. Yeah. Um, and do you know what classes you've got planned for June? Do we have any anything in the pipeline in particular? No, um, no, just social media and possibly another podcasting, because that was extremely well received and that was a great, great, great fun class. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to take that one. I yeah. missed it um, because sadly I have a harder time paying attention on virtual classes. I'm way better in person. Well, we had we had a seated class here. We had it downtown. Um, and we had people there in a very large room and then people zoomed in. So we definitely did our social distancing. Um, so yeah, I would, I would love to have him back. He was great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the next podcasting class because I'd love to learn that. People have talked to me about it, mm -hmm. but I haven't tried it. I've thought about it. Mm -hmm. I ain't scared. No, no but, need but to I, be scared. I haven't done it. If you can do this, you can do podcasting. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's the same thing, more yeah, it or less. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, except for right if you have my own little camera set up instead of their fancy uh -huh. one. And we'd have a mic, probably. Yeah, just Instead one. of one hanging over it. Yeah, I, yeah, we got one up. You can't see it, but it's right there. It's a big right boom there. mic, like on TV. Yeah. Or I guess it's this TV. Um, <laughs> so we got classes coming. The social media class, will that be Melanie, you think? Oh, certainly. Could be. Could be. Love Melanie If Deal. you are not following Melanie Deal, Melanie Deal on Facebook, D-I-E-H-L, you need to. She's the best. Great she, resource. Free, she free, was free. On, I think our third episode of, of uh, New Entrepreneur Show, Love Melody. Yeah. Um, I don't think she realized how much I enjoyed her classes because I sat there, learned a bunch of stuff, and went home. Um, but I went through two or three of them, and I knew when, when they gave me this show, I said, we got to get Melody here for sure. Great, great. Um, and I'm sure there's other great people. I just don't know the other ones. So I encourage anybody who, who is considering going into business, um, who's wanted to go into business, and they, they say 76% of Americans 
say they want to own a business someday. It's the American dream. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it has always been. Absolutely. And if, if that's something you wanted, and I use that stat way too much, but it's a Gallup poll. Sure. I love the number. Um, so three out of four of you out there want to own a business someday. Most of you don't own one yet. I encourage you, if you have a business idea, come talk to Gina, run it past her, bounce it off her. She'll ask you some questions. You won't know the answers. You'll learn something. No, you can that's keep not moving true. forward. Oh, they might not. That'll happen. That happens all the time. New business people don't think of a lot of, of the, what are you going to do if? Oh, I don't know. That's how you get to learn it. Run the idea past her. If you don't have a business idea, start educating yourself. You could get a business degree from UNC or Wharton or Stanford or wherever, and they're going to collect a million dollars from you. Or you can get free education right here at home in your spare time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these courses are, are, are college level courses where you can learn you can spend that hour, hour and a half well and make yourself better and more prepared for the future. So if you don't already have a business idea, start educating yourself, attend these classes virtually. And can we also say they're short term. You're not gonna commit a lifetime to me. Oh. The virtual classes will be, you know, uh, the podcasting class ran right at about three hours, but most everything we run is six to eight, six to nine. So, um, and we often do a part two and a part three, but yeah, you're not looking at signing up with me for a semester for my classes. They're, they're gonna be very short term. No. Short, quick classes mm -hmm. and if a smart aleck like me who's been in business for 35 years or so can learn from these classes, then I bet a lot of y'all can too. Um, there's a lot of information. Nobody knows it all. I don't know anywhere near all of it. Um, educate yourself. Prepare for success. Prepare for that side hustle. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And once you get the idea and you you know interact with other business people and you're ready for something more specific, specific guidance, go to Gina. Um, she can put you in touch with people who are experts in your line of work, your chosen field, what you want to do. I get that, get that secondary income stream, build some wealth. That's what it's all about. It is. And um, you've got the, you've got the classes. I do. Um, on the coming here mm -hmm. to Wesleyan, you've got the security guard up front. Right. Um, when you mentioned that, I wanted to say I drive past him every time I come here every week. It's not challenging. Yeah, no, they, you're not. They yeah. come out, they ask you your name, what you're here and for. And what you're here for, and that's it. That's um, it. At this point, they know me, the man with two first names, Fred George. Yep, they know me as well. Um, they just wave me on. So, yeah, the security guard thing's not hard. You drive in, the building's right here, the Gateway Technology Center, and um, you can sit down and learn some things. I'd like to also put it out there if anybody's looking at retail. Um, I'm always available for business advice if you can track me down. Um, small shops, marketplaces where I normally am during the week. I don't have the knowledge or resources that Gina has. Um, I'm very good at a few little things. She's got a much broader base of knowledge and a lot more contacts than I do. Um, but I'm available as well because once you get that knowledge and educate yourself, you kind of want to share it with people. Yeah, I was going to say, and I think our parting comment really needs to be networking. So whether you work with me or George or, or Fred or both of us, um, it is about networking because it really is who you know and building those connections, building those relationships. And, and certainly we can also assist with that. Oh yeah, and, and engaging in those conversations. Absolutely. Talking to other, you become what you look at. That's right. And you talk to a lot of brilliant business people, you, you become more brilliant and more of a business person. Mm -hmm. um, we talked before the show started, I learned most of what I know about business from the supper table, because my dad's a businessman and my mom was a businesswoman and my grandparents were in business. So you engage in those conversations, that knowledge kind of seeps into your head. Mm -hmm. It wears off on you. And the other place you can get that knowledge is here at the New Entrepreneur Show. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. The new Entrepreneur Show is sponsored by Statewide Insurers Group. As an independent agency, we can shop your insurance needs for the best coverage and the best value. Also sponsored by the Small Business Centers of Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson Community Colleges, as well as the Eastern North Carolina Center for Business and Entrepreneurship. Thank you.